Hello and welcome to another video. Now in this one we're going to do something different. We're going to actually unbox and build a dinky action kit from I think 1971 which is the Rolls-Royce 1001 kit which is basically the Rolls-Royce 152 dinky Phantom 5. I assume dinky started producing these kits as they were seeing the success of Airfix for example in the early 70s and obviously it's a way of expanding your product line without actually having to do any new tooling. So Dinky released a number of models uh, as in kit form, which were uh, mounted on a single piece of card with a plastic blister, rather resembling the Ethics Series 1 kits, which were blister mounted, if you remember those. And it came with paint. And you might notice that the Humbrol paint is actually non-toxic, or non-poisonous, should I say. Which I'm not quite sure what the difference is there. Now back in the late 70s, I actually built uh, three Hurricanes from kits, uh, a Ford Tipolori, and the Mercedes-Benz and uh, the experience of those kits is reinforced by the experience of this one and I'll explain later. Okay so what we'll do is we'll look at the pack that we're playing with and as you can see it's quite a heavy kit mounted on a thin piece of card so the card tends to get battered about quite a bit. Later versions of these kits came with a wraparound box cover as you can see everything's put together in a way that hopefully keeps it secure and you get one file of paint. The airplanes actually came with two. And on the back you have instructions which aren't very comprehensive. In fact the only instructions of worth are in the top left corner in that one paragraph. And the picture is basically it. Now the kits were slightly cheaper than the uh, proper models. Uh, at the time, I think the Hurricanes cost me 75 pence each. Uh, so, you know, the, which that sounds ridiculously cheap now, but at the time it was quite a bit of money. Now you'll also notice that the paint comes in a glass file, uh, and quite often that breaks when you try to open it. So I won't be using the paint when I'm doing this. Because of the weight of the uh, metalwork of the kit, it's not unusual to find these have actually uh, come apart and spill their contents. So finding these kits incomplete is quite common. So I'm just going to use a knife just to separate the blister from the backing card. As I say, it was quite common for these to actually uh, have split in the past and uh, you'd end up with uh, no paint or no, <laughs> no car sometimes. I remember seeing them on the shelves like that because the weight of them is a little bit of rough handling and that package will fall apart, which I presume is why the slightly later ones come with this like book style wraparound um, uh, protective sleeve. Also this, this, this one smells quite bad as well, so I don't know where it was stored but it has a bit of a uh, odour, shall we say. I'm just trying to cut it apart without damaging anything. By and large, the fragile components have been kept apart from the metal components by putting them into a separate compartment in the blister. But you'll find that a lot of components were probably damaged before they even went in the box. You'll see in the blister as well, there's a nice little hole to put your paint in, which is very handy. However, you won't be using that paint. I mean, even back in the 70s, um, I didn't use that paint because it had already gone off, even then. Because uh, I think the paint, basically, went off because of air coming in through the cork. And uh, in my experience, one of the hurricanes that I built, uh, both capsules of paint actually had burst and the paint had gone off so it just basically stayed put so it didn't actually make a mess. Which was kind of weird when you got the thing apart. Okay, so let's take a look and see what we actually get in our kit. Okay, so first off we have the uh, transparency, which is uh, one piece, and it is already scratched. Although you can't see it, it's got quite a lot of crazy on, on the top of it. Uh, so we might have a go at polishing that out in a bit. Okay, next we have the chromed plastic parts, so that's for like the radiator and the bumpers, front and rear. Complete with the uh, Rolls-Royce logo. And they seem to have lasted quite well. Looks as good as new. 
Just have a look at the seats now, which are in one piece uh, injection molded plastic. As you can see, there's not a whole heap of detail in this. It is quite a large, this is actually quite a large car. Um, so it's not, it's not very detailed, it has to be said, but it is what it is. We get one uh, driver figure with this. I know earlier versions of this car came with two rear passengers as well, but we only get the one driver. We get the chauffeur, who I can't help but call Parker. I suppose that's because of my age and watching Thunderbirds when I was a kid. Just trying to get the camera to focus on him. Okay, we have a steering wheel, which is very handy. And these are like the door cards, or the insides of the doors, if you like, which are all the same, and just the same color as the interior, and they'll just be pressed in. And we also have a transfer for the dash, which has detached from its backing paper. And it's rolling around loose inside the car somewhere. Well, there it is. It's actually slightly foil as well. It also comes with stickers for the number plates and it's for a H registration which is 1969 I think. Um, and obviously the yellow one goes on the back, it's a UK car, and the white one on the front. I'll just try and focus on that a bit better. Eventually. There you go. Um, I got carried away. There you go. So there it was worth the wait. Okay, so that's it. So you just get a couple of stickers for the number plate. Okay, just a bit of a closer look at that dash transfer. So again, that's applied sticker, but it's come off its backing. And it says, basically it's a metal foil sticker, which has had a brown woodwork effect printed on it. So the dials are silvery. So we'll have to use some glue to put that on. Okay, so I'm just not clear here, but what I'm doing is I'm picking up the jewels for the headlights, which are little diamonds and uh, they're just loose inside, they're not contained within a little packet themselves. And there should be four of them in this kit. Now it's gonna, I'm going to tell you now, spoiler alert, one's missing. Okay, so this is one of the bonnet covers. It's a split bonnet on this car. And as you can see from the design of it, the two pieces of metal. If I can just get it to focus. Focus. I guess get a camera. Anyway, you can sort of see that the one will basically turn inside of the other, which is, to my mind, a recipe for scraping paint off. The wheels are quite nicely chromed, and you've got four t rubber tyres, although admittedly the tyres have got gunge on them, so they're going to need washing. That's probably because the whole thing might have gotten damp in the past. The two axles are sort of split tubes. The idea is, is that these are then just sort of tapped into the hubs and they'll sort of contract and make a good firm uh, joint. Now the main body shells also contain some rubber components which we put into it. So there's things like the boot. And the base plate is being sort of temporarily attached. That's another one of the axles. And it's actually jammed on, which is quite weird. It's actually quite hard to get it off. So we might have to struggle with that a little bit. This is one of the doors. And you can see the recess for the door card inside. Now we've got the car halves apart, we can have a look at the base plate. And I often wonder what those two holes in the bottom of the base plate are for, because they have no function in the car at all. Other than just being holes, they don't even hold the uh, suspension down, so I'm not quite sure what that's for really. Okay, so this is the main body shell, which contains some bits of paper, should we see what they say? Right, and this is the little piece of paper that um, tells you if anything's missing, um, write to us at this address. And as we all well know, that's long gone. I 
think there's a shopping centre on it or something there. Or some retail park. Now the other piece of paper, let's see what that says. Right, so, for best results, stir your paint. But I'll tell you now, on, the, on these kits, the paint is um, long gone. They don't give you an awful lot of paint either, so you can't really um, go too mad on the kit. But anyway, the, you know, the advice is there. Play around with thinners. I'm, I'm not even sure if kids are allowed to play with thinners now. But it's a nice little period advert for the car. Now, what's this other piece of paper? Now, lift seat fully forward to rest on engine to ensure retention of bonnets. Ah. Now, a spoiler alert, that'll come back to haunt us. Now, of the dinky kits that I built, the common theme that went through all of them was they were missing parts. So the uh, tipper lorry that I built was missing uh, the hydraulic bit to pump the tipper lorry up. Um, one of the hurricanes had no cannons. One of the hurricanes had no paint because it was broke. Um, and the Mercedes I had was the worst. It had no bumpers, engine or any of the four doors. Uh, and that pack was sealed. So uh, I think they had a bit of a quality control issue there at uh, Dinky. As you can see there as well, we are missing one of our jeweled headlights, but that is the only part missing. So although the kit is supposed to be a 34 part kit, we have a 33 part kit. So we'll have to build it without the jeweled headlights because it'll take ages for me to order another one. Okay, this is just a quick re recap of the uh, contents of the pack. Just showing all the various components. You see a little bit of corrosion and rust as well. And um, three headlights. But everything else is there, so all is not lost. Now the instructions are short and sweet, but then in those days you were expected largely to figure things out for yourself. It's all part of the fun of trying to work out what was going on. But basically, uh, the only real uh, advice given is to use balsa cement to uh, stick the headlights in when you get them. And there's a lovely exploded diagram. And it doesn't tell you there's a sequence to put this car together. Now there's quite a bit of flash on the moulding. So say for example here on the bonnets, there's quite a bit of uh, flash that needs to be filed off. Because the bonnets just won't go together with it as it is. And there's also a bit of flash on the doors and a bit of flash on the uh, moulding of the shell itself. Some like weird moulding marks. So I wonder how good this mould this mould actually was. Was it a bit worn by this stage, or it's not great? So there's going to be some filing. Okay, and then we're going to use our power tool to just shine all the metal components up. provide a key for the paint. Okay, so we've jumped on slightly and we've sprayed everything with primer, which is the usual Tamiya. Although I'm using light grey primer on this, because that's basically what I've got. So it shows up the detail of the engine. I'll be honest, I don't really know if that's accurate, because I'm not really a Rolls-Royce person. I mean, I've had my choice a time again when I was a kid buying cars. I mean, um, I'd never have bought a Rolls Royce, it has to be said. Now, the base plate has been sprayed gloss black. So you can sort of see what it looks like there. So here the tyres have been washed in soapy water, and the water's warm, quite warm as well, so it makes the tyres easy to put onto the hubs. obviously the tyres aren't that young 
and so a bit stiff. So here I'm just using a hammer just to tap the wheels onto the axles and fit them to the chassis because this, this can be sort of done now. As you can see the axles just fit under that spring. And it has to be said they don't roll very freely so uh, this rolls almost will never go particularly fast. Just tap the hubs onto the end of the axle with a hammer, using like a bit of material or something, just to, so you don't damage the hub itself. And uh, that's it; they go on. And that's that's your chassis ready. So now we're just going to glue the dash transfer onto the dash, and stick the driver and his wheel all together onto the seats. So that's the dash done. And then put the driver in and the steering wheel, they just click in. Now I did have to trim quite a bit of flash off the driver um, as it was uh, making him look like it got huge ears. I had to touch him up a bit in as well. Right, so that's where we are so far. So we've got our seats, our running gear, and now we'll turn to the painting of the rest of the components. Okay, so we've jumped on. So the car's been painted in a dark metallic blue. Um, and one of the reasons I haven't got video of that is because I had to paint it outside and with the rain that we've been having lately I had to be quick uh, so that the paint would uh, be done without uh, gassing anyone in the house so uh, one of my next purchases is to get a paint booth so we can extract the fumes and I can actually video what I'm painting uh, because now the weather's taken a downturn Okay, so now all the metal parts are glossed up and are all shiny. And that's the original file of blue paint. So this is my attempt at getting something that nearly matches it. And you may have noticed I managed to spray my hand again. And it always sticks to my fingernails, which I'm a bit worried about. Um, but anyway, you can sort of see it's a bit darker than the original colour, but the original colour is kind of separated, so I suspect the colour is darker than the file is letting on. Okay, so we're giving the clear parts a polish and we're just giving them a, a dunk in the liquid polish just to sort of give it a bit of a shine. We'll do a quick bit of engine detailing and we're going to do some lights uh, and then we'll be ready to assemble. I've already painted the engine a kind of natural metal and now I'm going to use 
uh, some black just to do what I think is the air filter and the radiator with because cars of this age usually had things black in the engine compartments there wasn't much of the shiny stuff going on okay now we're going to add a little bit of silver the usual stuff or aluminium and we're just going to brighten up some details in the engine compartment Now we're just going to do some of the lights detailing on the front and on the rear. Right, we'll just detail the indicators. I think that's going to be just about that for the painting. Okay, so here's our body shell with a detailed engine, uh, indicators and uh, lights. Just try to get the camera to focus on it. So it's not too bad looking. Okay, so we fit the glass by just pressing it in and it looks like it just clicks onto the little stud. This is where I come across another issue. Click it on and it cracks. So anyway, not too bad, we can get away with that, but uh, you do see quite a few old cars which have got cracks which have started out around that pillar and then have spread, which eventually run down the whole length of the moulding. So it do make you wonder. Now here I was using tape to hold the doors on whilst I was assembling it, but what I found was it's, you can't actually put the seats in with the doors fitted. Although there's a gap there, it's intended for you to slide the rear hinge, hinges of the back doors, the back suicide doors, through those gaps. But you can't do it because the glass is in place. So I believe what you would have done in the factory was you'd have pressed in the glass and the seats at the same time to get through that. Um, so obviously I hadn't already put the glass in, I couldn't do that. So I ended up getting a bit grumpy and I actually ended up cutting the uh, seats apart so they went in two pieces, which then slotted back together again to get the whole car to assemble. Now eventually I got everything together uh, to fit together, but what I found was, as I suspected, is that the bonnet, in just assembling it or even trying to operate it, you'll just scratch the paint off. Um, and the one door scratched its paint being opened and closed because uh, the fit is, very, is well I'll be honest it's very poor it's kind of like uh, how you see some of the Teslas where there's like the gaps around doors are all over the place and the poly lines are not um, consistent the other real uh, gotcha that was discovered assembling the car is is that front bumper and radiator they actually hold the far end of the bonnet assembly in place which is great but you cannot offer the bonnet and the radiator straight up to each other. Because it goes around that post for the screw, it has to come up at an angle. And basically it's trying to push the bonnet away from itself when it's doing that at an angle. So you basically end up snapping it slightly to get it to fit. I was just showing off my nails there because um, I keep spraying my hands. It's always my left hand that keeps spraying. Anyway, on goes the base plate. And this also required a little bit of force uh, sorry, coercion. Anyway, the car is now assembled, um, even though we've had to scratch the paint a couple of times to actually get the various castings to go around each other, which I was very disappointed with. I could imagine a child in the 70s putting this together and, and probably not even painting it. Maybe painting it afterwards and um, not being very happy with the job that they did of it. Anyway, on goes the screw, and we can um, make this puppy safe and sound. If I don't stab myself with the screwdriver first. Okay, just fitting the door cards last, as I forgot to fit them earlier. But I didn't think it was a big deal, because you can get to the doors quite easily when they allow themselves to open. Which, I must admit, they're not very good at opening and closing. They tend to... I think they're warped. 
Okay, so I've put the number plate stickers on, and now I'm just using a little dab of super glue to uh, put the jewels in. I'm just going to be very careful not to glue my hands together, because that'd be that'd be great YouTube content. Okay, so here's our car with its three headlights. Uh, I'll get one from somewhere eventually, but I just want to get this video finished. And uh, there you go, that's what it looks like. Alright, so let's see what this looks like on the turntable. Okay, so here it is, all assembled. Now I know I put the number plate on the back on slightly wonky, um, but uh, the stick is not very good on it, so I'm going to have to like, use glue on that as well to reattach it. So as you can see, it's quite a large model. It's a seven inch turntable, so you can see it's pretty big on it. And it's actually struggling to turn because it's quite heavy. Um, as you can see, the door lines aren't great on it. It kind of lets down the, uh, the look of the vehicle. I think as a kit, it's not great. But as a bit of fun and an exercise, I think it was quite fun to do. Anyway, if you enjoyed what you've seen or not, please comment, please like or dislike. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.